On May 17, 2024, the New York Times quoted Bruce Gagnon, which was published in a piece titled New Star Wars Plan, Pentagon Rushes to Counter Threats in Orbit, which included a subtitle, Citing rapid advances by China and Russia, the United States is building an extensive capacity to fight battles in space. A few days before this piece was published, Bruce Gagnon, the co-coordinator and founding member of the Global Network, was called by the New York Times reporter, where they discussed several issues for over 30 minutes. Some of these issues include that the US and Israel is blocking a new space weapons ban treaty at the United Nations and have been doing so for 20 some odd years. The Space Command planning document from 1997 called Vision for 2020, which lays out the whole U.S. space strategy. The nuclear industry agenda to put nuclear power in space for mining the planetary bodies and to power space-based weapons. The first strike attacks planned by the Pentagon against Russia and China using space weapons, which includes the enormous cost of the Star Wars plan to begin with. After 30 minutes of discussing all of these issues, the New York Times quoted, This is the quest for domination by the U.S., said Bruce Gagnon, a longtime peace activist from Maine, who has called for a ban on all weapons in space. That's it. The article then followed the usual course from a bourgeois media source, pumping up the threats from Russia and China, followed by a solution to pour more money into the Space Force, using quotes from generals, aerospace industry leaders, and political hacks to back this argument, which all of these careers depend on a new arms race in space. The article began with, the Pentagon is rushing to expand its capacity to wage war in space, convinced that rapid advances by China and Russia in space-based operations pose a growing threat to US troops and other military assets on the ground and American satellites in orbit. And how does the author Eric Lipton know this is true? Because he's been told by Pentagon top dogs, whose careers depend on pumping up such threats. Essentially, the generals of the Pentagon and the owners of the aerospace industry have become professional fear mongers. And they need lots and lots of public money to drastically overcharge simple items, such as a bag of bushings, which would normally cost $1, but the military industrial complex would charge the government $90,000. This, Mr. Secretary, is a bag of bushings. This bag of bushings, stamped out by machinists, don't need a high, don't need a, you know, they need a high school uh, uh, diploma. It's not, not anything high tech about this. All of this bag is compliant with the FAA specifications. How much do you think the Air Force pays for this bag of bushings? I don't know, Congressman. $90,000. This is a $90,000 bag of bushings that you need for any jet turbine engine just to operate. So the exorbitant cost due to DOD only buying commercial parts from the OEMs, which is essentially sole source, is literally driving us out of business. I mean, the interest on our debt alone is now exceeding for the first time in American history the entire defense budget. We can't afford it anymore. Now, we can argue that Eric Lipton, along with the rest of the crew at the New York Times, are not journalists, but they are. They are bourgeois journalists. They provide a type of service, journalism, but only for the benefit of a particular social class in society, that is, the bourgeoisie the capitalist class. They are not journalists for the working class, for the people. And a people journalist is something much different, one who would expose the lies and corruption of the capitalist class and would write about the truth of the matter at hand. You see, the capitalist class must protect its interests, which includes lying publicly about their aims, while the working class interests include telling the whole truth since we are the majority. But both a bourgeois journalist and a people's journalist are indeed journalists, but each one serves a particular social class in society. A journalist either provides their service to the capitalist class or the working class. This is the difference. But why, you may ask? 
because society is made up of classes and everything right down to the jobs and services that we provide dictate which class of people we serve. There is no one that lives in a bubble that exists outside of society. We are all connected to this society and the society is made up fundamentally of classes. So the New York Times is indeed a newspaper filled with journalists, but it is a bourgeois newspaper filled with journalists who serve the capitalist class. They write in service to this class. They will undermine the interests of the working class. On the flip side, we need more newspapers and journalists who serve the working class. Journalists who expose the truth about our society and the lies spelled out by the capitalist class and its news outlets. And we need journalists who serve this working class interests. This is exactly why we have an old phrase that sums this all up. Which side are you on?